Maybe the real suppressors were the friends we made along the way. Yeah. <laughs> Can we include that somehow? What do I do? Howdy everyone, Chase and Garrett here from Silencer Shop. And today we're gonna to talk about what you might wanna consider when you're picking up either your first suppressor or adding another silencer to your collection. There are four key considerations whenever you're choosing your first suppressor. Caliber, firearm type, what kind of shooter you are, and special features of the suppressor. So what made you wanna get into shooting suppress in the first place? Besides looking cool. It's definitely a bonus. Obviously sound suppression was a big one for me. Reducing recoil as well as increasing accuracy. And honestly, just trying to live out my Call of Duty LARPing fantasies. How yeah. about you? <laughs> I'm definitely in the same boat with movies and video games, but also I just wanted to kind of ditch the bulky hot hearing protection, especially here. It gets super hot in the summer in Texas. Yeah. Moving the hearing protection from my ears to the gun. And then like you said, getting the reduced recoil, better accuracy, and the guns are just more fun to shoot. You're probably here because you're trying to pick out your first suppressor or add another suppressor to your collection and you're not sure which one you should get. Silencer Shop is here to make silencer ownership simplified right down to making sure that you make the right choice for your firearms. Choosing the right suppressor is all about matching the silencer to your firearm and the types of shooting that you're doing. Similarly, a pickup truck might not be the best choice for a racetrack and a Lamborghini probably isn't gonna do too well at hauling hay at the ranch. So Garrett, what's the first thing that you think about when you're trying to add a new silencer to your collection? The caliber, you wanna make sure whatever caliber you're shooting, the suppressor is, is compatible with that caliber. So you wanna make sure you choose a suppressor that is the same caliber as your firearm. Yeah, that's right. And the most common calibers are gonna be everything from Rimfire 22 LR, 5.56, 308, 9mm, 45 ACP. And then there's even some specialty calibers. If you have a 50 BMG, they make silencers for 12 gauge shotguns. And more commonly now we're seeing calibers like 338 or 86 Blackout specifically yeah. really taking off in the market. So in most cases, you can shoot a smaller bullet through a larger silencer. For example, 5.56 will work in 308 silencers, Yeah. but that isn't backwards compatible. 308 won't work in my 5.56 can, bullet's too big. Exactly, that's definitely a situation you do not want to run into. It might work once. Mm. There's also multi-cal cans like this one that have a 36 or 46 caliber bore, which essentially means you can shoot a whole variety of calibers, which are really good for first time buyers since they can suppress pretty much anything that's in your gun safe. Yeah, those multi-cal options, they sound really good and they work on just about anything that you might have in your collection. But if you wanna get a little bit more features, a little bit uh, better sound performance or lighter weight, going for a dedicated option might get you a little bit better performance. So 5.56 on your 5.56 guns, nine millimeter silencers on your nine millimeter guns and so on, just nets you slightly better results, um, but you trade off a little bit of versatility. Absolutely. If you're unsure which calibers a silencer is rated for, just scroll down on any product page and you can see a list of supported calibers that will work on that silencer. After you've selected the caliber that you're most likely to shoot, what do you think about next? Firearm type. What kind of gun are you shooting? Grimfire, handgun, AR-15, PCC, pistol caliber carbine, bolt action, or shotgun? Most of you are probably shooting semi-auto rifles like the AR-15 or AK-47. Gross. Beardless Garrett and Chase love AK-47s. Never insult the video guy. And if that is the case, you might want to consider some of these more modern designs that are high flow, flow through technology. And what these are really designed for is keeping the gas and sound moving downrange out of your barrel instead of coming back into the system on those more gas dependent semi-auto platforms. And they work really well at keeping your gun suppressed and keeping it running cleaner and quieter. If you are shooting those semi-auto rifles, your ARs, your AKs, you probably want one of the tougher, more hard-use silencers because you're, you're probably doing a lot of training or maybe you're clearing out hogs and coyotes, really high round count stuff, or you're like me and you're just mag dumping into trash. You want a silencer that can keep up with your rate of shooting. And maybe you like shooting more bolt action or lever action guns where you have that manual action, the gun doesn't need to run with the gas system. You can get away with a silencer that's actually trapping more gas with these more traditional baffle designs. It can be a little bit more sound performance oriented and they can use lighter weight materials because you don't have that same high rate of fire when you're out hunting with your precision rifle like the fix up there or a lever action. They're gonna have a little bit lower round count. They don't have to be so robust and they can get away with using like titanium and aluminum a little bit more than some of those really hard use silencers uh, for the semi-autos. 
And then there's, uh, what if I'm shooting like a handgun? Yeah, I noticed you skipped over that part because you're a terrible shot with a handgun. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Pistols are some of the most fun hosts to suppress. They're crazy quiet, they look awesome, and they let you live out your John Wick Larkin fantasies. Handguns, generally speaking, have their own style of suppressor. They're thinner, lighter in weight, so they clear the pistol sights, and they require the use of a booster assembly to cycle properly. Pistol silencers are usually broken down into two categories, 9mm and 45 ACP. Yeah, and while I am no good at shooting suppressed pistols, I can tell you that they are a lot of fun to shoot because of subsonic 45 ACP is super quiet. Oh, yeah. And you can get those 147 grain, 165 grain, 9 mil loads that sound like whisper quiet when you're shooting them with a silencer. Pistol caliber carbings like your AR9, your MP5s, your Scorpion Evos work with larger diameter suppressors since you don't have to worry about anything obstructing your side picture. These can be mounted via direct thread or QD like Trilug. Yeah, so Trilug is the common mounting system you might find on the MP5 or other AR9 systems. It's super fast QD, just on and off, but this will not work on your pistols. This is only for fixed barrel systems, and there is nothing more fun than mounting up a good suppressor to your MP5, hit that HK slap and let it rip full auto. And the last group of silencers that we want to talk about are the Rimfire or 22LR silencers. And these are some of the most fun you can have while shooting suppressed on a host like our Ruger Mark IV SSH or your bolt action, lever action 22s. They are incredibly quiet, have nearly zero recoil, and they really put a smile on your face with every pull of the trigger. They sound amazing, they shoot amazing, and they're pretty affordable to get into as well, which makes them a great option for your first silencer. Uh, maybe breathe a little bit of life into that old rimfire hose that you've had in the back of your safe and you want something new to do with it. This is a great way to have fun with a really old gun that you might not be shooting so much otherwise. The important thing about rimfire silencers is the ability to keep them clean. 22 ammo is a little bit dirtier than centerfire ammo. It uses a lead bullet, a little bit different priming compound. So you can get some carbon and some lead stuck up in the baffles here. So you want to be either able to take it apart or use a cleaning solution like what we're seeing from Cat and Huxworks coming out to be able to keep this thing nice and clean and operating at its peak performance for a lifetime. And if you do have any questions on cleaning your 22 suppressor, click the video above to check out our full in-depth how to clean that 22 suppressor video. Moving on. Now. So if you're a Now that we've talked about the calibers that we're shooting, the types of guns that we're shooting, let's talk about the types of shooting that you're actually doing. Yeah, so like, how do you shoot? How often do you shoot? Are you doing competition? Are you hunting? Are you training? LARPing? What's your overall yearly round count? Yeah, all of these things are gonna play a big difference in the silencer that you choose. You're gonna wanna think about how much you shoot, how many rounds you're shooting, and you're gonna wanna be honest with yourself because this is gonna play a big role in which suppressor is right for you, depending on the materials and the features that kind of set these apart for durability, weight savings, and reliability. So if you're a big hunter or a bolt action guy, you can get away with a suppressor that weighs less since you're only shooting one or two rounds through it. Mm -hmm. Versus if you're big into training or competition shooting, you're gonna wanna get a suppressor that weighs more um, and is more durable. So it's made out of your Stellites, your Inconels, your 17-4 stainless, you know, those materials that can, you know, take the beating and kind of keep going. Yeah, that's right. And speaking of competitions, we've been seeing competition shooters shoot a lot more silencers lately. Shout out to our guy, Hunter Constantine. He's been shooting suppressed in a bunch of different competitions and doing really well. We're also seeing silencers taking off a little bit more in those like PRS precision rifle style shooting matches and even like steel challenge and stuff like that. Now I start seeing, you know, suppressed 22s in the weekly steel challenge matches that I'm going to. It seems like suppressors are everywhere. And that's because of the, the reduction in sound, reduction in recoil, helps you stay on target a little bit easier. They help you even when you're not just plinking or hunting, but if you're competing with your guns too. So no matter what kind of shooting you're doing, there is a perfect silencer for you. If you are one of those people that is doing super high round counts, you're training every weekend, you're shooting a bunch of competitions, or you do have access to a select fire machine gun, you're gonna wanna go with the heavier duty full auto use duty rated silencers that can stand a little bit higher strings of fire. 
versus if you're a hunter or you're shooting precision rifles or just plinking on the range, you might be able to get away with something that's a little bit lighter weight and won't weigh you down and still has great sound suppression. We covered calibers, the types of firearms that you're shooting and the kinds of shooting that you're doing. And the last thing that we need to think about is the special features that set all of these silencers apart. Things like silencer design. Is it 3D printed versus traditional baffles? Are you using a proprietary mounting system or do you have hub mount where you can change out your mounting systems? Also, do you need something that's modular and can change length or user serviceable like a rimfire or pistol can? You can take apart for cleaning, keep that longevity and service life going. Generally, silencers are just a long black tube and they all are trying to increase sound suppression, but what really sets them apart from each other and makes them different and why might you select one over the other? Well, Chase, they may all, all, may, may all look like black tubes on the outside, but it's on what the, it's the, it's something on the inside. I'm gonna make a joke about that. <laughs> <laughs> the ins, it's on the inside. It's, 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 it's on what's on the inside that counts. It's what's, what's on, on the inside that counts. It, what's on the inside? What's on the inside? What's, what, that doesn't make any sense. What's on the inside? That's the saying, dude. No, it's, it's on. What's, it's what's on the inside that counts. You can't say it because it's a heartfelt line. <laughs> I know. She's like, I've never said anything sincere before. Yeah, <laughs> it is true. All right, try it again. Well, they all may look pretty similar on the outside. It's, it's what's on the inside that really counts. And there's actually been a lot of cool developments in the industry, specifically with 3D printing, like Huxworks, CAT suppressors, as well as Surefire, all implemented 3D printing in their designs to allow for reduced back pressure, better suppression, and just honestly creating an overall better shooting experience for the user. Yeah, that's right. And we've also seen some advances in like mounting, how you're actually gonna attach the silencer to your host. There's some proprietary systems. You might still see some silencers using direct thread only. And what's pretty common now is something like Hub. This is 1.375 by 24 that allows you to change out mounting devices super easy. So I can remove a direct thread mount and attach my favorite quick detach, chemo, plan B, ASR, TSFX, whatever mounting device I want. And I can easily swap this silencer between hosts, even if they might use different threads, like my AR-15 uses half by 28 and my 300 black uses 5 eighths by 24. I can put a muzzle device on each of them, a hub adapter into my silencer, and I can move it from host A to host B really quickly yeah. and easily without having to swap out tools and mounts. Not to mention a lot of suppressors actually do have modularity as an option as well, which essentially means you can change the overall length of the suppressor to fit it to your exact needs. So with this Q Erector, if I wanted to save weight, you could take off a couple of baffles and then run it in a uh, short configuration. Or if you wanted to go for maximum sound suppression, you could run it in its full length configuration. Yeah, being able to take off a few baffles and really tune the silencer to your host makes a really big difference. I can right. run it a little bit shorter if I'm shooting a handgun, and then a little bit longer when I'm putting it on my rifle, depending on how much sound suppression I need for the platform. And it also allows you a little bit more user serviceability so I can take these apart, get to the baffles, and make sure that everything stays nice and clean, and I'm getting the maximum performance for the longevity of the cam. So no matter what calibers, what types of guns, what types of shooting, and what special features you need, there is a perfect silencer for you. And at Silencer Shop, it is easy to figure out which one is perfect for your build. And if you do have any questions on anything we've covered today, drop a comment, shoot us a DM on Instagram or Facebook. We're here to help you figure out the perfect suppressor for your build. As always, make sure you click the subscribe button and subscribe to our newsletter for the latest in suppressor news and info. And thank you guys so much for watching. No, uh, I, I, I went for like this.